everybody, and welcome to Table Takes. It is the first week of February, the season of love, Black History Month, and soon Chinese, uh, or sorry, Lunar New Year, correction, Lunar New Year uh, coming up. It's a whole lot of, a lot of things going on today, and look at that. I see a whole lot of pretty faces in here that I need to go ahead and talk to Javion. You look the prettiest of them bunch. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thank you, Bonsai. Game recognized game. Uh, not it. Um, That's for sure. <laughs> I, I should have thought of that sentence before it came out. I was just like, oh, he's going seen this too. No, I feel like you said it right. I don't, I don't see any issue. Um, I've, I've been doing great this week. This has been my uh, tater pig week. I don't know if you guys remember that from last week. We, we decided... Uh, TTRPGs are called Tater Pigs now, for short. Right. Um, right. We're shortening the acronym. Yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know what it is, but I usually, like, hate writing. <laughs> I hate sitting down to do one thing. I needed to do, like, three things at once, you know? But for some reason, I have been getting super, super deep into the Spelljammer campaign that we're I'm going to be running. The uh, module's called The Light of Xerixis, and I'm learning all about plasmoids and GIF, which are truly, truly the the pinnacle, the greatest achievement Watsi has ever come to is creating giant space mm-hmm. hippos, okay? Um, and then I'm also, like, prepping Wilderfeast, which is this really cool monster hunter-inspired RPG system that's not even fully out yet um about like hunting monsters and then eating them but also but ethically um (laughs) it's it it, i don't know what it is but uh bonsai i stepped up my game this year this is my year as liz lemon would say this is my year i also started watching 30 rock oh (laughs) yes but still that's still uh a round of applause. We love you flourishing. We love all the things. Uh, also, Delicious oh, Dungeon oh, is something if you're uh, looking for. Watch that anime. Uh, the My manga favorite manga. Is I own every book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right. We know, we know. I agree. It is better. <laughs> the manga is way better. Uh, besides that, uh, we'll go ahead and, but yes, uh, someone else who is very, very familiar with all the GMing and tabletop role-playing things that are going on noir what have you been up to this week i was giving you a chance to also call me pretty you're and... also beautiful no 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 it's too late no. it's too late now clearly you've made your decisions um no i've been good uh i'm sad to miss you guys uh i didn't know where tater pig came from and you guys have been saying it all in the green room (laughs) and i've just been like yeah tater pig now i know what it means and i'm never leaving anita here (laughs) without me (laughs) again no uh no but i've had a pretty cool week uh went to hang out with some friends and watch the royal rumble uh and while we did that we played betrayal uh betrayal on the house of the hill a legacy um wow uh, yeah, I I have died every time. Uh, the first time I died, I was murdered by an old lady uh, who stole my kneecaps. Uh, and then I was killed by a, a little girl who also s- stole my kneecaps. So um, that's me. So. <laughs> I mean, you might have very pre- kneecaps are very <laughs> high de- demand. You know, you don't get them until you're at least three or two years old. You know that. That's true. <laughs> it's a fun fact. But they're mine, though, and they were taken from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll let I'm you sorry. segue from that. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what? I feel like we just need to 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 give a little, especially. Uh, I don't know. No, that wasn't a. That's a terrible segue. I was like, so someone who might. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. What? <laughs> Bonsai is fucking I... shot today. I love so this. Sorry. I love this bonsai. I am keep it mean, up. Uh, my. <laughs> I am just chaos today. Hello. But Peter, how have you been? Also, I'm sorry. You're all beautiful. You all have nice kneecaps. I'm just trying to be as pretty as Noir. I mean, I think Noir and I are tied for last place on this. I'm I'm telling you, man. We just got overlooked. I just, I I, I don't know what it is. But uh, 
I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to cut right to what I've been up to. Uh, tech problems, tech issues. I had a hard disk go bad. And um, I thought it was fixed, but it wasn't. And I thought I had some good files and they weren't. And it involved uh, three trips to Canada. I, it, it's been a tough couple of weeks, let me tell you. But I, once again, think everything's fine now. And we'll see how things go. Uh, how about you, Bonsai? Uh, one of the cutest, prettiest people on the on the channel. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm bad. Anywho, I've been good. I've been binge watching Has Been Hotel. Uh, if you guys ever followed their yes. YouTube series, uh, they have an Amazon Prime show, and I basically binged watched it all and uh, have been getting back into it. I dropped. Like, you know, they, it was it was a long series and coming, all right? They were started on YouTube, which, hey, I still am very, like, round of applause for all of these, like, YouTube and various different content creators that came from a different form of media that are actually making their shows an, a reality now, and that is getting very well received. I like seeing that. I like seeing all of these independent creators getting their chance in their moment to actually show their work. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's what I've been. Um been doing this week just like that and and playing some pal world video games uh which i have to read more about now uh all, all that jazz all that jazz but you know what it's i've you know what also took a long time coming uh this that DD y'all has now officially turned 50 years old that's five zero uh yeah, it it's it. Thank you to uh, James uh, Maliza. I'm sorry if I pronounce this Maz Maliziki and uh, from. I'm pretty sure you got it right. Uh, that's not a perfect. <laughs> yeah, and Kevin Purdy at Arc Technic for bringing this up. Uh, so, long story short, nobody really knows when uh like D and D was actually actually like you know released first released uh we do know that it occurred on january in january 1974 uh john peterson uh basically the writer who has documented the history of rpgs speculated it was probably on january 26th or 27th in 1997 but there's no clear date unlike a lot of other like it wasn't really really super documented it's just like hey we want to go ahead and play this game let's go ahead and release it out to the world so that I mean, but now that it is officially February, we can say that D and D's got that official boom, got that 50, 50 year old stamp. Uh, not quite fifty five. Can't get the senior citizen citizen discount. Uh, also, I want to know post office where are my uh, current uh, are my D and D fiftieth stamps that we talked about. I haven't seen them yet. I've been going to the post office and they haven't given it to me yet. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? It is officially fifty. What do y'all think? Fabulous. Only 20 more years until D D can retire. <laughs> In this economy. Dang. I think it's great. The found it, it means that not only is D D 50 years old, role playing, specifically tater pigs, are also 50 50 years old. Mm. Yeah. I... <laughs> but yeah, no, I it's true. I feel like, yeah. So I mean. I wonder what the whole release is going to be because if 50 is a big number for especially for a company that's been long around for so long. I wonder what the new releases are and if they're going to come out with a, a you know another edition even though they say it's never going to happen. I mean I have not, I have no idea what Wizards is going to do haven't <laughs> for a long time but I can tell you that at Gen Con we are going to celebrate the 50th hey. anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons on uh, not only on Gen Con but on Gen Con TV so we are organizing some things some events some programming <laughs> around to celebrate the thing that's yep. exciting that is very exciting I can't and wait. these birthday party rager maybe <laughs> yes. maybe we can get Jeffrey Dome Sanchez or Alex Meehan to do an article about our plans. That way we can cover it. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. It's all coming full, full circle. circle. Full circle. You know, with with D D turning 50, it, it's always good to look for some new blood in the water, especially when people can get their hands on it for free. Right, Javion? Exactly, Bonsai. Uh, this article comes to us from Jeffrey Dome Sanchez of ICV2. Free RPG Day is coming back once again this year, and we have a date that has been picked out. 
June twenty second. Last year is June twenty fourth. So this year on June twenty second, head to your local uh, game store and pick up some free RPG content. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there, as always. Last year, we got the Avatar Legends quick start. We got some root stuff. We even got Dragon Bane and heckin' good doggos. It's a great opportunity to pick up some free RPG stuff, some free Tater Pig stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it's always uh, one of the things that I advocate for is people actually trying new RPGs. And there's never been a bed better time to do it. Don't wait till June. Pick something up now. Get really excited about it like I am. And then, you know, tune in on Free RPG Day uh, as like a save the date sort of thing where you can get all your gaming tables together and actually pick out of all the free stuff which one you want to try out. Because it's usually stuff that gets you invested, gets you involved, but it's also easy to pick up and do a one shot of. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, I remember we had Steve Ellis on our show earlier last year uh, doing an interview about Free RPG Day and all of the cool stuff that was coming out um, and all, everything that he does to help make it a reality. You know, it's not every day that we get free stuff uh, and our community could definitely use as much exposure as possible to new things so that we're not stuck um, just with one idea of how Tater Pigs are supposed to be. It, it could be a plethora of different things, a, a whole spectrum. Um, speaking of which, Demiplane. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but like, it's a really cool way to get involved with RPGs. Uh, Avatar Legends, something that you know was a, a quick quick start uh, last year that you could pick up. Now you actually get to play some of this stuff. Put your character sheets on a website. It's a little bit easier to use. Let's all pledge to play more RPGs. And I'm very excited to see what stuff comes out on Free RPG Day. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And shout out to that uh the what was the website you said again? The Demi Plane? Demi Plane, yeah, yeah, yeah. Demi Plane. Yeah. yeah. Or check nice. out uh the free RPG Day uh website, free RPG Day Yeah, thank and you, shout thank out you. and shout out to Steve Villas for doing this free RPG day for so many yeah. years. You know, what a what a great idea. I'm glad that it's worked well for him. He keeps doing it. Fantastic. And it's a great promotional opportunity for RPG publishers to get their games out. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I like we're all gamers here. Do you <clears> have <throat> any like specific like good memories, like experiencing like something new uh for for uh participating in free RPG Day? Do y'all have any stories that you want to share? Oh, Noir, what'd you got? Uh honestly, the reason that I got into TTRPGs as heavy as I did is because uh during one of the free RPG days, uh the look my friendly local gaming shop, Wandering Dragon over at Joliet, shout out. Uh, um they did a a test uh, or a demo of Eldritch Horror. And I'd never played a board game like that before, where it's like a board game, but it's also telling a story. And uh, I was just like, well I'm gonna I'm clearly gonna need more of this so like i ended up staying there the whole day uh like i left with like so many little trinkets i still have the zombie side figure that they were giving away at the mm. time um and th that that's also the reason i got into hero clicks for a little while there i'll never forgive them for that but uh <laughs> yeah yeah uh i i owe a lot to free rpg day Nice. That is that's a very heartwarming story. Anybody else got anything to share? Or I could also jump in uh with a couple of things. Like uh basically we joined a free RPG day uh like I want to say over 11 years ago. Um and well not wait, no. 10 10 years ago I have to do the math. 10 years ago and our RPG group we still have the same friend that we've had for like uh yeah, that's my only friend so far in a long time that I haven't met over the internet first, and then <laughs> met them. We met them at a free RPG game, and I was I like to boast, be like, "Ha, huh, you're the only friend I've met before internet." Was <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's always a good thing to to discuss about. I'm like, wow, yeah, everyone else <laughs> I became friends with because I interacted them online via gaming, via like you know some through chat window or on Reddit. 
uh you know uh, it's and it's pretty fun to think that like yeah since since I got out of like like you know college and stuff this is how you meet people in the real life is that yeah making friends RPG. as an adult sucks yeah it does <laughs> but you know what doesn't uh suck new <laughs> games that are coming out Peter what yes. new game all right this article is brought to us by Will Niebling and ICV2 Ravensburger, yes, the company that produced Lorcana, they do other things, by the way, just in case you might just recently only first heard of uh, Ravensburger <laughs> because of Lorcana. No, they've been around a long time. They've been doing puzzles and games. They have announced a trio of new family-friendly products set to release this year, including Gravitrax Jr., Garden Heist, and Oh My Pigeons. Before you ask, no, none of these are tater pigs. Okay, so releasing in March, Gravitrax Jr. aims to teach STEM concepts in a fun way by allowing children to create gravity-based marble runs using track styles and tools included in the set. This series uh, includes base sets and add-ons as well as jungle, ice, desert, and ocean-themed sets. Components vary by set, with the MSRP running from $25 to $130, intended for ages three and up. And I just got to say, like, when I was a kid, I think I, I would have loved this as a kid. I mean, this looks like a lot of fun. Garden Heist will release in June. In this game, based on the children's activities, Red Light, Green Light, and Hide and Seek, players become raccoons trying to sneak into a garden to snatch food and other goodies. One player acts as the gardener, hiding behind the house screen, waiting to pop up and try and spot the hidden raccoons in the garden. Garden Heist was designed for ages six and up. MSRP is $25. Yes, six and up. Yeah. Scheduled for August, Oh My Pigeons is a party style game in which players try to attract pigeons to their park bench with snacks or steal them from their rivals. Features pigeon miniatures. Oh, now that I could use some of those. And it combines both card and dice play, intended for ages eight and up. MSRP is $20. So, I mean, we got to start talking about games like this for you, Bonsai. You've got a little human that's on its way. Uh, do you have a bunch of family games lined up that you're going to play with their little human when they get a little older? Well, we have some that uh, we've been... I have some, but it's a lot of dexterity games that they have for kids uh, and a lot of hidden, like lo le like the Loch Ness Monster kind of hidden picture games. But it's still that age requirement of three and up because a lot of gaming pieces, unfortunately, are very chokeable. Uh, that's why it's ages three and up. Uh, but I am very excited. Like I said, I've been reading books to them. You know, got to get indoctrinate them early into the tabletop RPG and tabletop gaming uh space uh but yeah no i'm very excited to introduce and yeah it's always that three and up it reminds me of like when i was growing up as a kid the only board games i really got to play is like that mousetrap terrible game i mean it was fun <laughs> to set up but that game if we're gonna be honest no one knew how to play and don't tell like don't wake daddy and the crocodile scary crocodile game operation oh yeah. operation yeah Anybody played the crocodile game where you have to like poke the teeth no. of the crocodile? I played I Crossfire. Yes. Fire. Rock 'em, stock 'em, robot. Crossfire. You get out of the run. <laughs> but yeah, what are other child like? So, Javon, you said you played the crocodile game noir, Crossfire. What are some like childhood like introductions to board games that we we can say as a kid? What about Rock 'em, stock 'em, robots? Oh. Yes, I think that was the yeah. game too. I that love Rock of Robots, but it's still good the game. <laughs> the still game. I feel like the blue one was always the weakest, though. Like I feel like <laughs> there was a manufacturing snafu where the head would always pop on the blue one. I don't know. Uh, Did you know that there's an arcade game, uh, like a large human-sized arcade game for Rock and Sock and Robots now? See? I I want to go to there. <laughs> go to Dave and Buster's. The best game. Oh, uh, yeah, Dave and Buster. I used to play uh, Mr. Bucket when I was a kid. Which is a oh, game. Mr. Bucket? <laughs> yeah! Put your balls in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bucket. Yeah, they didn't, so uh, they didn't remake that one. Um, but that was fun. Yeah, no, see, like, it's, 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 we all have those childhood games that we're really into. 
and everything like that. And a lot of those, I didn't even think about that. They were like considered tabletop because, you know, with Mr. Bucket, you have, you have, you're running around trying to like get these in or the elephant with the, the butterflies that you're trying to like not have fly into your mouth and choke oh, you. Oh yeah. Um, at the same time, but yeah, no, this it's it's fun to have these kind of moments, and I do uh, appreciate family friendly products that for for getting like little ones into board games. Bonsai, uh, I I have some opinions on toys in board games. Would you mind if I go next? Oh, okay, yeah, we could go ahead and do that. I, well, let let go, let go, let's go. What what do you got? I'm going to need a little bit of help for this. Marcus, would you be so kind as to grab my soapbox, please? Oh my god, we get it. You think trains are cool. So overrated. <laughs> Patan. Ticket to Ride, Pandemic, Monkey Palace. All of these games have one thing in common. In one way or another, they change the game. Innovation, my friends. Innovation is how we keep the fire of board gaming alive. The time has come. A new champion of board gaming has arrived, and its name is Lego. Friends, why haven't we thought of this sooner? Adding Lego to board games? It's perfect. We've had all this time to design board games. And what's the best we could come up with? Tile placement? Jenga? Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Hungry Hungry Hippos. Sure. No, we need to add more toys to board games. Lego. Yet. It's been too long. You had all this opportunity. This should have this should have happened decades ago. It's been a long time coming, and we are ready. Let's get into this article. Uh, thank you to Chase Carter of Dicebreaker for this. Asmo Day and uh, Lego are teaming up to make a family friendly board game. Uh, they are partnering up with the largest producer of plastic bricks to make a game set in the deep jungle called Monkey Palace. Uh, it's got some aspects of co-op and competitive design as you're building a home for the ever watchful monkey. Uh, it's a game for two to four players. It's gonna release later this year in October. So unfortunately we're gonna have to wait for a while, but the wait will be worth it. Um, uh, there's not a lot of details at the moment, but we know that it's going to have Lego and you're going to be trying to get victory points, you know, like most games, uh, building a temple from bricks. And then you'll have a structure at the end that you can display alongside the uh, Batmobile model and ooh, the, the Rivendell set. Ooh, so uh, I don't know if you guys are as big a fans of Lego as I am, uh, but I cannot wait to see how this sparks creativity for other uh, toys in board games to sort of put their best parts together and synergize. You know what I'm saying? No, totally get it. Uh, I will say in the <laughs> Lego community, there has definitely been a lot of people making dice towers and also using Lego minifigs as their own uh tabletop like basically uh sets and figurines and so i i approve of this uh as well uh and also you don't always have to officially get lego there's also a lot of like other bricks that are similar but not exactly the same for a way cheaper price if you think that because the price point we have to be aware if of your parents point. bought you mega blocks they don't love you oh dang <laughs> wow no are coming in with the swings uh, I mean, I have I have my own collection. I have of of Lego, so I'm very excited uh, to see what they have uh, here. Mine is mostly for brickheads and big like space uh, themed builds, but I don't know. Uh, Noir, it looks like you have some words about Lego. You want to talk to us about? No, uh, you know, I, I would you mind if I segue into 
it, it, to what, what my article is because I, I I like I like this through line we got going here. Yeah, which no. is which is we need to start thinking about the kids. And uh, my my story here is that Resin Beast Painting Contest is coming to Adepticon 2024 and has a twenty one thousand dollar prize pool. Uh, Parabellum Games and Creature Caster. Uh, uh, Beastarium Games announced their $21,000 prize pool for the Resident Beast Painting Contest, uh, which takes place March 21st through uh, the 24th, 2024. The prize pool will be distributed across a number of category prizes. Um, this competition is for painters and hobbyists of all skill levels. The theme for this year's contest will be a dungeon crawl where contestants will battle the resin beast. It's open to all painters of conquest or creature caster models, and awards will be handed out uh, the evening of March 23rd, 2024. Now, I, I, you hear me say that, you're like, what does that have to do with the kids and family-friendly gaming? Baby's first Warhammer. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. All right? (laughs) The worship of Slanesh for kids. Baby's first skull throw. You you know, you're not actually, that's not actually a bad idea. Thinking about it, like getting like bigger cheese for toddlers. Of war, like I'm just saying, I like I like this idea. Get them, while, get them collecting while they're young. I, I get them into figure painting. Safer than lawn darts. Come on, <laughs> I would give I would give Baby Bonsai a whole army of Slanesh and Nurgle army. Yeah, oh, it's oh gonna gosh. be great. I I mean, honestly, that sounds like could that's all right, all right. Uh, can we Noir, please I, I, Warhammer? I, we need. We need this, uh, like big bigger <laughs> figures, chunky figures that kids can paint, and then Noir, maybe that's, put it in. That's the best yeah. idea you've come up with on this. Yeah, show. just like, just like, <laughs> like little foam armor for the kids, so they can run about. Floor the emperor. It's it'll be great. <laughs> perfect. Uh, perfect. I like this chaos, and I support it. Uh, but no, that is definitely a huge, like, especially if you guys uh, take a look to click on the article, look at all the past winners of this, like, art content. Like, basically, it takes a lot to paint these figurines, all right? I don't know if you ever got into mini, like, painting figurines or anything at all. It's a lot of work, and it's a lot of, like, using your pinky to get the little eyes. Like, th- this is the technique that I adopted while doing a lot of minifigure paints where you just, like, your pinky is what steadies you. And then, you know, we don't have enough money to get, like, a, what is Airbrush? Airbrush? It's airbrush. Yeah. It's called airbrush. I mean, painting is so hardcore in this hobby that people who end up being really good at it have, have left their jobs and just painted armies for people full time like that's a thing and i don't know if this is true I, I, i've i've been reading 40 40k lore for a while i've been playing it for a very little bit but i heard that the rule is should the game or should the match come to a tie the better painted army wins so <laughs> so many Whoa. things decided that way <laughs> I mean, I, I but I know a lot of folks who are just real lazy about painting and just have their like matte gray ones. I I don't. I'm yeah. just to say, I'm the I'm the same way. They would but, not like that table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let, let we. I need to get in contact with Gamers Workshop so we could do Warhammer 40k, but the K would be for kids. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. I like I like those ideas. Uh, but yeah. So okay. speaking of paint, mini painting and stuff, don't forget that uh, uh, we also have a mini painting show on our Gen Con channel. And if you want to check out, join Rick. Uh, Rick in painting a lot of like Path of the Brush, uh, as as he goes ahead and shows you how to do all this. Really neat things, you know. Wednesdays but you got at 4 p.m. Pacific. Yes, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. Just check it out. You know, I, I feel like this is dangerous ideas. You know, somebody might come at you with blades in the dark. Right, Peter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, if you're worried about games for toddlers, I say jump straight to Tater Pigs. Uh, <laughs> where better to start than a TTRPG about political intrigue? Yeah. This is brought to us by Alex Meehan at Dicebreaker. 
Court of Blades is a tabletop RPG, or a- a.k.a. Tater Pig, that has players carrying out heists for political power instead of money or treasure. Inspired by the likes of classic novels like The Three Musketeers, as well as A Song of Fire and Ice, or um, The Lies of Locke Lamora, or Dragon Age Inquisition, and even The Godfather, Court of Blades is a tabletop role-playing game about court intrigue, secret assi- uh, assignments, and the power of influence. <clears throat> this tater pig uses the same forged in the dark gameplay system as Blades in the Dark, where players roll t- six sided dice to perform actions. However, rather than carrying out heists for an independent underground gang in Dusk Bowl, like in Blades of the Dark, players in Court of Blades are, complete, are completing errands for their chosen house in the city of Elrian. Rather than being a dark and haunted steampunk industrial city like um, Duskville, Ilrian is a bright city of romance, art, beauty, and most of all, political posturing. Like a mashup of pre-revolutionary Paris and Renaissance Venice, Ilrian is a city controlled by a council of political houses, both major and minor, headed up by the leader of the most influential and powerful house, the Prince. As members of the currently least powerful house in Ilrian, the players are tasked with doing whatever it takes to improve their house's standing. Discreetly, of course. The players in Court of Blades are part of a coterie within their house, which is a squad of skilled professionals whose role is to further their house's interests within Ilrian. What sorts of errands they perform could depend on whichever house the group is uh, becomes part of. Whilst Lavelle is a house that prides itself on its knowledge and socialite nature, the Almari house is one formed of mercenaries and so isn't afraid to get its hands a little dirty. The sorts of errands the players' coterie might be doing can be anything from avenging a perceived slight against their house, acquiring a lost or desired item, influencing an important decision, or gaining a powerful ally. Successfully completing these errands will not only boost the standing of the player's house, but also their own place within it. Along the way, they'll need to be careful not to involve themselves in too many scandals by running low on stress or overindulging too much, as there are eyes and ears willing to sell them out at a moment's notice. Characters that become entangled in too many scandals will find themselves being pushed out of the house or the city or possibly even into a casket if they're not careful. Court of Blades is a tabletop role-playing game about danger, extravagance, romance, passion, sleaze, and secrecy. If you've ever learned for a game that stimulates the kind of power play and drama found in the likes of Game of Thrones, Romeo and Juliet, Rome, the Borgias, or the Tudors, then seek out the Court of Blades on itch.io. Ooh, that sounds like a very interesting game. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, that is yeah. very intrigue. I like it. Uh, you know what also intrigues me? What about the background politics of, you know, the gaming industry in general? Noir, do you have something to talk about? No, but thanks for asking. <laughs> Okay. I'm just teasing you. You know I got something. Ooh. <laughs> so, tabletop revenues down on Kickstarter. Let's really quickly a uh, quick shout out to Charlie Hall over at Polygon for doing some deep diving on this one. Uh, tabletop analytics report that funding for tabletop game projects uh, projects declined on Kickstarter in 2023. If those numbers are correct, it marks the second consecutive year of decline for the crowdfunding giant in the tabletop category. As a result, the data shows individual tabletop creators earn 30% less on average for their campaigns compared to 2019, the year before the COVID-19 pandemic began. Of note, the providence of this year's financial data, uh, after sharing its data publicly with uh, Polygon for nearly a decade, Kickstarter declined to do so this year. Uh, quote, we're not discussing specifics around the total dollars raised at this time, said Nikki uh, Korea, head of communications at the P- uh, Public Benefit Corporation. In an email uh, in, a, in, in an email. Instead, Polygon sourced data from a third-party tabletop analytic, which says it draws the crowdfunding company's own publicly facing website. When asked to verify this data, Kickstarter also declined. Uh, so, the tabletop analytic 
analytics data from 2023 shows that Kickstarter earned $10.2 million less from tabletop projects than it did the year previous, representing a 4.3% decline from the data Kickstarter shared with Polygon in 2022. That's a far less than it declined in 2022 when Kickstarter uh, data showed a decrease of 33.6 or 12.4% compared to 2021. Uh, absent the spike in 2020 and 2021, which Polygon attributes to the pandemic lockdowns that kept homebound players focused on their tabletops, the 2023 data from tabletop analytics shows a significant increase in revenue going to tabletop campaigns on Kickstarter over 2019, a roughly $50 million surge representing a 28 percent increase from before the pandemic but at the same time the data shows the average tabletop creator saw their share of that revenue fall sharply when compared to the same period a decrease of 31 percent from sixty seven thousand three hundred and fifty dollars on average in 2019 to just forty five thousand nine hundred and eighty two in 2023 that would mean the average creator is making nearly a third less on the average campaign uh Again, Kickstarter has declined to comment on this, but when uh, Polygon asked a few creators and a few people involved uh, in the tabletop uh, scene, uh, one was quoted as saying, if the data here is accurate, there are so many factors that should, uh, that could contribute to this. Uh, and that's from Adam Poots, creator of Kingdom Death Monster, the second most funded board game in Kickstarter history. Crowdfunding fatigue, multiple crowdfunding platforms, people aren't spending like they were during the first bit of the pandemic. It seems more natural than alarming to me, he continues. Uh, and then another quote says, I would love to see Kickstarter slow down and focus on developing more much needed community management tools and draw an extreme hard line against the use of AI generative art and Kickstarter projects, Poot said. To me, the trust of its users and potential users is more important than ensuring numbers only go up. So this is a complicated issue that the tabletop or the tater pig community is facing. But it's one that I think we can survive. I think, I think right now we're trying to find the way to go back to normal when we're not exactly sure what normal looks like these days. So um, I still believe there's plenty of life in the tater, tater pig community, and uh, I can't wait to see what else comes out. But that's enough about what I think. What do you all think about this news? Uh, I think it's also a big thing to say that it's not n like before. It used to be just Kickstarter that people used to go to. And yeah. now as during like mm -hmm. basically we've seen the couple of years, we got backer kit. We got a whole bunch of other states. So it's not that the the idea of funding games is down. I think that people just have a lot more options. Um, I yeah, know, I, what think, about I think that's a good point, Bonsai. Obviously, yeah. People on the same ways. You know, there's there's more than one option for um crowdfunding now and it used to be that people just all said the word kickstarter all the time but now i've noticed you know that we call it crowdfunding board game geek has a crowdfunding section now people are starting to look at it as a category of uh, of trade or a category of distribution and financing really um and not not just one source so and the fact that within that context kickstarter those declines are not i mean i don't know you're also coming off a pandemic i think it's amazing how, how often you read the news these days about economic trends and job trends and all sorts of stuff. And and it's almost like people forget, come on, just a couple of years ago, we were in this huge pandemic. I think that that just shakes everything up. It's like taking yeah. the whole world and going like this, you know, <laughs> uh, just like we still need time for everything to settle. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and, you know, as talks go around with like Kickstarter and all kinds of things, I think a lot of like, uh notions about what's going on with D&D &D specifically has been woo everybody gets shook very easily especially with uh commission speaking about talks about D&D &D. uh so i don't know if you were in to the drama this week but uh hasbro uh reportedly was in talks with D&D &D i uh, to basically distribute the D&D &D IP to uh Tencent well 
Uh, it, thank you to Char uh, Chase Carter Dicebreakers uh, for bringing this out and Christian Hoffer at Comic Book uh, for telling more about what's going on. So if you guys didn't know, Tuesday, uh, the Chinese business industry reported that Tencent was in discussion to acquire D&D IP from Hasbro's. This, of course, set the table, the, the, the tear pig community aflame. And people are like, what, what, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, well, just letting you guys know, um, what there was just confusion. It was confusion between like people miscommunicating over like translations, essentially. Uh, one, the Ch the original Chinese business article put out uh, was a little bit mistaken on what was actually going on, but. Uh, and people translating what they saw on the website didn't get a full translation. So that's what gave uh, everything up in a flurry. But WotC did release a statement on Thursday, basically two days after, that clarifies the D&D franchise itself is not up for sale. Uh, but that they are having a regular discussion with Tencent that they... and quote unquote, we'll be keeping, uh, we'll be talking to partners on how to bring the best digital experience to our fans. So if you guys don't know uh, what Tencent is, uh, Tencent uh, is a, like, a, if you don't know, okay, sorry, Boulder's Gate, the new game that won game of the year, uh, people that have been thirsting over in the video game tabletop community, uh, they were originally made by Lanria. Landria was one the company that was first approached by Hasbro, but unfortunately <clears throat> didn't have enough money to secure the funds to get the D and D like working with D and D license. Um, so then they approached their owner company Tencent about maybe making a deal about making future games. So calm down, calm down. It was just people talking. And Peter, what do you had something uh, that you wanted to say about that? <laughs> Oh, this brings back fond memories. Um, I, it, it's every few years there's another rumor that either somebody's buying D and D from Hasbro, or somebody's buying WotC from Hasbro, or somebody's fr buying Magic the Gathering from. You know, it. I'd say until you see Hasbro issue a press release that says we have entered into formal negotiations for the sale of this, that, or just don't believe it. It's it's yeah it hasbro is now i don't know about now i admit this should be a grognard moment back in the day the ceo of hasbro told me we don't sell brands we buy brands and we exploit them that's what we do hmm. you know the idea that um hasbro would sell a brand was completely alien to that. but now you know hasenfeld family is no longer in charge of uh hasbro uh you know who knows what their strategy is now but it doesn't seem like they it's hard for me to believe that they would sell any of their properties Okay, well, I am having a little technical difficulties at the moment. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I am now a is rainbow. It, is it um, Pride Day? Is it Pride Day? I, it? I, I feel the maximum love that I feel day. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and I think this is now time. JVM, we need that bundle. Bundle bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, and welcome to the Bundle Bar. <laughs> good gentle people, attend to this all new Good Society Bundle. Adhere, fans of Bridgerton, Downton Abbey, perhaps the Gilded Age, in fact. A tater pig, a tabletop role-playing game for you. It, this comes to us from the Bundle of Holding, the Story Brewers Role Play. Good Society is a collaborative recency RPG <laughs> that captures the heart and countenance of all the Jane Austen novels we've come to love. Create your own regency character from a wealthy heir who falls in love with the aloof new arrival to a charming socialite bent on ruining a rival's reputation. On the surface, good society is about balls, estates, sly glances, and turns about the god. Yet, players must navigate powerful currents of social ambition, family obligation, and breathtaking, heart-stopping longing. Oh, 
Good society gives you the power to change the story in your favor, taking control of influential connections, creating rumors and scandal. The drama! Act now. For just under a fortnight, this deal will be no more, and you will have missed your chance to collect a bundle valued at over $68 for just $17.95. What a deal. Act now. Click the link in the Twitch chat and find the new RPG system, which is sure to have your players raving for a long time to come. Not only is this a great deal for you, but it's also a great boon for rainforests, as 10% of your payment will be donated to this good society offers designated charity, the Rainforest Trust. Won't you come? Cheerio, cheerio! Good, 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 good bundle. I, I like that. That was a very tasty bundle. Uh, but now that I have my palate, I have a taste for more things, more crowdfunders, as it is. Bring up the court! Welcome to Crowdfunder Court! Here come the judges. Prepare to be judged. All right. Court is now in session. Now, I hope you all don't mind that I will take center stage first for my uh, crowdfunder. Uh, this is coming from Backer Kit. It's called Memento Mori. Uh, it's it's a role playing game of dreams and corruption. Uh, so this is a role playing game in which players take a role of drifters, uh, people who are sick with the plague and being sick with the plague and close to the realm of dying death. Uh, the, you can uh, you can actually so sorry. This game is also being played in medieval Europe. So you know. Lots of disease rampant, as as one does when you don't wash your hands or bathe regularly. Uh, and <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's the closer you get to death and somehow it makes it so you can see the other side through the veil. Um, so you you play as plague affected folks wandering about the medieval Europe in this twisted version of reality. Like I said, being infected gives you strange powers and exposes you to the challenges beyond the veil. All players are doomed to die. So no matter what, you're going to die. At the end of this, you're going to die. But as you die, you grow more powerful. Uh, uh, and the whole idea is that you want to accomplish your personal dreams uh, before you do die. Uh, the game is very, very beautiful, all right? So this is definitely a game uh, that I, I could probably see a lot of people looking at the artwork, not reading what the game is actually about and just buying it because it's really, really pretty, which it, that's what originally caught my eye. And then I fell in love with the plot as I read on. Uh, but it's gorgeous, uh, especially um, it's it's clearly designed and illustrated from to look at the styles of medieval manuscripts or codices. Uh, and if you look at the highest tier, which is the Deathless Edition, uh, this it takes it up to another level. It takes uh, uh, four fake books that contain custom tarot cards, a set of dice, uh, rat, like the, the wrap around it is a DM screen as well that's magnetized on there. Um, and it is just very, very pretty. It's got gold. Uh, and also I like the idea that you are just somebody like that the act of being infected by the plague allows you to see deeper into the veil. Uh, so if that's something that you're uh, liking and you want to play, remember, it has until February 8th next week. So Memento Mori, a role-playing game of dreams and corruption. Noir, what do you have for us to ta tantalize our flavors with? Sorry, I thought I'd ever say that again. <laughs> do you like tabletop games? Do you like Mad Libs? You ever want them to be the same thing? Well, I've got just the game for you. It's called Tabletop Gone Mad. No prep, fill in the blank. TTRPG one shots. All right, baby. It's 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 real simple. Don't don't overthink this. What it is is it's Mad Libs, right? 
And the Mad Libs are going to form your adventure, your characters, your bad guys, the whole thing. And you're going to pass it around the table and everybody's going to put in a word, an adjective, verb, noun, the whole shebang. And then, then you as a GM are going to run it. So it's just like, you know, the Dark Lord, but uh, it has <laughs> taken over. <laughs> Has taken over the 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 righteous kingdom of, but <laughs> <laughs> with the power of his stinking butt, like it, it'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> Listen, this is as simple and as straightforward as it gets, and that's what makes it so great. You've got twenty seven days to back this. They have two thousand three hundred and fifty one dollars on a goal of two thousand. So they've already they they just funded. This this is a good time. It's a great way to practice your practice as a GM. Allow your players to get out some of that dumb stuff that they bring into your real game. <laughs> like let them get it out in the one shot where you have to fight Dark Lord butts. It's it's fantastic. Uh, you can start your pledge at only fifteen dollars as a player, or you can go up to uh the game master level and get even more cool doodads. But uh, yeah, buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. I'm sure everyone will be very PC and very not talking about genitalia all the time. Uh, Peter, what do you have for us? <laughs> All right, uh, I have a crowdfunder, the Monty Python board game. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. It's currently live on Kickstarter. Monty Python and the Holy Grail board game has raised 245,000 pounds and has six days left. You are one of the knights of the round table and have joined King Arthur in the legendary quest for the Holy Grail. But this is no ordinary board game quest, Valiant Hero. This is an epic adventure of absurdity that will take you across the land to visit all your favorite and not-so-favorite people and places from the Monty Python and the Holy Grail movie. You and your friends will venture to far-off lands to battle the Black Knight, to catapult cows, to hurl insults against the hated French, and complete the most quest to prove that you are the most valorous or valorous, whichever, knight of all. So... Gather up your coconuts and get ready to ride off with a few fond friends because no one can say me to the weirdest and perhaps most pointless game you play this week. The game features an original movie artwork by Terry Gilliam and stills from the movie, a buildable 3D catapult, wooden meeples and point markers, a board, and best of all, you can remove the Black Knight's limbs to gain Power ups, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's so. a flesh wound. It, that, it, it is. I've seen worse. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. And <laughs> that actually illustrates the point. I could go on about the mechanics, but really, it's just a chance to sit around and rehash your favorite lines from everyone's favorite movie. Uh, yeah. Why not? It sounds good to me. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah, most excellent indeed. Uh, let's see if it sinks or floats. We do throws it in the river, or if it's a witch. Um, in any case, <laughs> I think we need to go ahead and drift to Javion. Boop boop. What do you got Woo-hoo. for us today? My Kickstarter is Tokyo Highway Rainbow City. If there is an architect or a city planner in your life, and you struggle to find a gift for them that speaks to what you know they love. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you. Maybe you haven't picked up a copy of Tokyo Highway, but I can tell you it's a fantastic game about building highways made from popsicle sticks and discs. Now we have a Kickstarter, which gives you the opportunity to buy that game, as well as its newest expansion, Rainbow City. The Rainbow City comes with colorful new city spaces and landmarks, new missions, uh, more car types, and new strategic scoring options. You can place down rainbows, uh, towers, airports, and even stadiums and museums in your brand new rainbow cityscape. Uh, There are lots of fun materials and upgraded components. You can back it on Kickstarter today using the link in Twitch chat. This comes to us from Eaton, which if you didn't actually uh, recognize that name, 
they've made a lot of other cool games in the past. I myself have several of their tiny box games that have a lot of three second or 10 minute games as well. So they're very creative with their stuff. I believe it is uh, a company based in Japan and they send us a lot of stuff like Tokyo Highway. So definitely check them out. You've got 19 days left to back it and check it out. Uh, they've already hit their goal of $3,000, which is you know, pretty low for an expansion, if you ask me. Uh, so definitely hop on because it's not certain that they will go to retail with this expansion. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, big, huge set pieces on games and trying to not only build these things, but try not to knock everything down in the process. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Definitely check out Tokyo Highway. Thank you very much, Javion. Well, now that we have all of these beautiful bird games, you know what I declare? Everyone's a winner. You're all beautiful. You're all special. <laughs> and Peter, why don't you give us a lovely sign off? All right, we'll do bonsai. Uh, we might be done with the news, but there's more to Gen Con TV than news. In just two hours, we have Sarah's Table, where Sarah will run the RPG Bird Crimes, where a group of criminals smuggle armed birds onto an international flight. That's today at 5 p.m. Pacific time. On my next episode of Peter vs. Machine, I will continue my game with Sid Meier's Civilization VI as England, where I am at war with Germany and Poland. Find out at 9 a.m. Pacific on Monday whether I will be able to hold the territories I seized with King Arch Arthur. That's right. We're on the Arthurian thing today, aren't we? In Dress to Quest, a random encounter of a few Duergar led to the discovery of an entire fortress of them. What will they do Monday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific? In Indie by Night, our beloved vampires regain their footing after realizing that someone is manipulating the shadows to keep tabs on them. That's Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific. On Path of the Brush, join Rick Ankney as he finishes the Tontor from Conquest by Parabellum Games. In Rick's own words, it's going to be a yabba dabba doozy. That's at 4 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesday. On Actoroki next week, I will continue my Burning Saratov campaign with players Ray and Marcus Mays. That's right. Who will try and stop the economic collapse of the Empire. Good luck. That's Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Thursday morning at 10 a.m., we will have Blood on the Clock Tower. Then join us again at 5 p.m. for some Shadowrun shenanigans with Rim from Rim Alternus. Then Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, we are back here for the best show of all, Table Takes. Thanks to the Gen Con TV crew, Marcus Mays, Steve Connard, Sarah Moore, Janelle Lovett. Thanks to my delightful co-hosts, Jay Vion, Buckaroo, uh, Buck. <clears throat> Bucker, I'm sorry, Bonsai Baby. Uh, that was getting you back for your yeah. previous comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 it's not Buckaroo Bonsai, nor is it Buckaroo Bonsai Baby. It's just Bonsai Baby and <laughs> the Noir Enigma. And thanks most of all to all of you for watching and hanging out with us in chat and, you know, putting up with our little comments, our tater pigs, all that stuff. And remember to follow Gen Con TV for more of the best four days in gaming all year long. Thank you, Marcus. Right here on twitch.tv slash Gen Con TV. And by, me, by follow, I mean, please click the follow button. Thank you. That's it. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>